So I, I, I have I have some really funny shirts. I like these kind of funny shirts, and uh -huh. they're, they're um, one definitely says, "Running late is my cardio." <laughs> <laughs> and I love that one because when I wear it, people are like, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you're just known for being late. So it's genetics. No, that's terrible. And we are back between two eddies. And we are here with Danielle Butler. Good morning to you. Good morning, how are you? I'm great. It is Friday the 13th. It is. The love day that, that day. America traditionally Hides in their house. Hi, they do. It's only America. Is it really? Only America? America, yeah. No, I remember going to Asia once and they didn't have 13 on their elevators. That's um, because a lot of Americans probably go to Asia. That's and they just true. kept towering to you. Exactly. Is it, I always wondered, how did they get rid of that 13th floor? What is on that 13th floor? <laughs> <laughs> bodies, I just assume it's got You've be seen body. being John Malkovich, right? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Blime, so. We finally get you on the coolers. I'm so excited to be on the coolers. Thank you for uh, inviting us to. This is this is really like the heart of Fort Lauderdale, isn't it? It Las is. Olas. It is very much. I made sure I positioned my life that I have to travel maybe a half a mile. <laughs> Don't want to go outside. Three mile radius. Because Fort Lauderdale traffic is terrible. It is. It is, mm -hmm. and getting worse. It, it, it unfortunately would yes. Yeah. We went from a town into a metropolis overnight. Yeah, pretty much overnight. Mm -hmm. With um, no proper planning and infrastructure. No, That's off the record, really, right? really? <laughs> the one thing I, because I live in Miami, the one thing that drives me nuts about Fort Lauderdale is nobody has ever thought about the stop lights being synchronized. No, mm -mm. Stop. No. Stop, If stop you again. hit one red light, Done. you're, yeah, you're, you might as well just stay there for maybe a, a couple of sequences because <laughs> you're going to hit all the rest of them. <laughs> I know, it is. Yeah. So you're not from Fort Lauderdale, though? I am not. Born and raised on Long Island and was there until 18, came down here, went to University of Miami, back up to New York for law school at New York Law School, and then came back down here because why would you not want to live in this weather for the rest yeah. of your life? It is very hot today, though. It is. It well, is. That's why we sort of hiding. It's hiding. July 13th. So, yeah. you know, we, we, good, I love this planning. It's great planning. <laughs> so, listen, I'm normally sweating all the times anyways because I'm running late all the time. So, I'm, I'm used to this heat. Yeah, should we preface this? this is, the, is this the fifth time we have tried to do this? Um, it's at yeah, least the fourth. So. It may yeah, be the yeah. fifth. You're fifth busy. Successful. You're so busy. I just I can't like ever even, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> With all these interviews, I'm like, please, get me on these coolers. <laughs> so, you're a lawyer. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay. Um, with one of our favourite people in the world, Andrew High. Yes. Um, you were both at Hills, Betts and Nash, right? We were. Okay. We actually were around the block, but professionally around the block. But what we, does that mean? Oh, that's an American term. Around the block? Yeah, yeah. It's for another context, oh, okay. but um, okay. you kind of talk about your social life as being around the block. But anyways, we have, we, we have been to a couple of firms. We kind of figured we were like, Goldilocks, you know, just testing the beds and the porridge and take, gathering information. And I think we created something quite special. Yeah, it really is. Thank you. Really. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay. So we're, 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 we're New York. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts in New York? Because New York's quite big, isn't it? Bellport, Long Island. Okay. It's about two towns west of um, Hampton Bays. It it's, sounds very nice. It's really kind of quaint. Okay. So it's one of those towns that you were just, we called it Boreport growing up. It was so boring. boring. Right. Now you're like, oh my God, I'm from Bellport. Did I tell you I'm from Bellport? <laughs> you know, it's one of those sorts of situations. <laughs> okay. Well, good, good. So you were just saying that your family's tra those not tradition? It, well, it's not tradition. It's, it's, um, it's our family business. Family business. Mm -hmm. Fireworks. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my mother's father's uncle that's our lineage right and um, the company is about 170 years plus old we're not quite sure 170 change. years old mm -hmm. an american business is 170 years old well it came from body italy and R so in total you're italian are you jewish as well i am not i'm half italian half german and catholic Whew. Mm. It's a nice mix. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
I've got the stubbornness and the explosive personality, so it works well together in business. Yeah, okay. But also the fun with it as well. Well. Hence Jaws. The, it's that I benefit to my father. He says you always get more with sugar and honey than you ever will with vinegar. And I can tell you as a lawyer, I use it all the time and it catches people off guard. Because normally I'm just a horribly mean person. You can tell. <laughs> so. Just emanates from your body every, every time you just <laughs> see it. Like, I am definitely probably the uh, antithesis to most lawyers, but you only live once, so. Yeah. Now. Okay, jumping subjects, Just we'll come back to the New York bit and the fireworks. Okay. I was doing, talking with a group of ladies yesterday about women in yachting. Okay. There's very few of you. There it's are. It's very white, it's very European, it's yep. very male dominated. But I saw that as a massive positive because the few females that there are, from what I know, are very good at what they do. I have to take credit that we are very good at what we do. Yeah. I have a wonderful group of women, um, not a committed organization or anything like that but we put it together about three years ago we don't have any formal name but I guess you could put it you could say you know women in yachting or something to that effect but it actually turns out that we all happen to be really good friends and we were going to lunch anyways or dinner or drinks mostly drinks but and then it is Fort Lauderdale. It is, yeah, right, exactly. And <laughs> we are in the yachting industry. Yeah. So um, we started to think about it. And of course, there's that old adage that women are terrible with doing business with women. Yes. We're just, we're very social creatures. So we'll get together. And I do business dealings all the time. So I sit with a man for a business lunch. And it's all business. And it's, you know, to the point, there's no fluff. And I go to lunch with a woman, and I'd say 80% of the conversation is social first. And then we leave the last 15 minutes of the lunch. You just reminded me that's, that's Italian. That's the Italian way of doing business. I remember going to Italy, and you'd spend, you go for lunch, yes. you spend the, if you're going for an hour's lunch, 15 minutes is all getting to know, and the last 10 minutes, business, 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 espresso, go. In my, <laughs> in, in my experience, um, because with the fireworks and now with yachting, I've been very blessed to do a lot of business internationally. And it's really just America that just wants to get in and out, in and out. Let's get to the point. Let's yeah. get done. I got a busy day. Got to grab a hot dog on the truck on, you know, for lunch and, and work, 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 work. I, I think that's because America is a very young country and it had to prove itself very quickly. Right. And that's just, and I, that's the part of America I like. Yes. It's just, it's not this... Uh, it's not hanging around and two hours for lunch and siestas and months off on holiday. It is. Yes, yes. We're not paying the majority of what we earn back, you know. So, yeah, there's trade offs everywhere around. Um, and I'm in my 40s, so I guess historically I'm in my decade of major earning potential. So, it, I oh, think is that what it is? Like, yeah. This is it. Yes, that's it, man. You've got 10 years to just go for the gusto, so. And if you make it past those 10 years without any health elements, things falling out of you, you know, divorces and all that sort of jazz, you're, you're no, doing well. You just reminded me, you touched on your health. Yeah. That was... Health has been my yeah. cross to bear, that's for sure. So, but I do truly believe that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and I could attest to that, so. Yeah. You've got a couple options when, when uh, the gray clouds come over and you could crawl in the corner and cry, right? And I don't want to say feel bad for yourself. You legitimately have a weight, a, 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 you know, um, an impingement in your life. But what I have found out that when you do that and then you get up whenever it is that you come out of your fog, you are so much more behind and also disadvantaged because, you know, you're unhealthy. Mm. So I just think you just deal with it you in a healthy manner emotionally and physically and then just keep moving forward do you feel you're clear now right no i'm i've got issues i've right. got a, a you know 2014 was my my year so there was a multitude i was diagnosed with cancer i was diagnosed of what with um, my thyroid thyroid so, cancer mm -hmm. which you know what apparently if you're going to get any cancer you want to get thyroid cancer 
That's what I was told. Really? And you're like, really? Really? <laughs> because you just said the word cancer <laughs> and like the best. I don't know how you put those in the same subject. So but what, they can just take the thyroid out and it's... Yeah, so there's, I have a little scar there. And um, so went to Sylvester Cancer Center. They diagnosed me, um, went in, they had, took my thyroid out. And fortunately, because it was, went undiagnosed for so long, I had it in my um Did you have the, like, the, flappy, the flappy glothoid? No, problem. no, no. I, I had for the week after no, no I mean, voice. But I mean, the symptoms. Oh, you no know symptoms. what was crazy is that my thyroid was functioning 100% perfect. And that's what was You weren't feeling mire. lethargic or anything nothing, like that? Nothing. And when they took the thyroid out, it actually was um, in, entombed within the thyroid were 10 cancerous tumors. So they were just really shocked and that I had. It's tiny. Right? It is. It's. it's, it's it looks like a very, very small Did you bow tie. It? No, no, I asked them to, but the doctor thought I was nuts. But I was like, you know, No, I want to cool. see this little... <laughs> like, can you put it in a little cup for me to take home? I guess it's medical waste and F yeah, FDA I know. won't allow that. Oh, really? Oh, in England, if you get your appendix taken out or something, you, you want to see it. You want to lay eyes on... But you can't take it with you. No, you can't take it with you. I was going to say, yeah, okay. That, that would be a little strange. Yeah, but no. Put on the mantle. You don't often see your own, you never see your insides no, yourself. No, so. no, they took pictures. So I saw pictures. Oh, okay. Because that same year, so I had four surgeries in radiation, and then my immune system decided to go on vacation permanently. So okay. I had, <laughs> I had fibroids out. I had, which looked like stay puff marshmallows inside your body. I had non-malignant tumors out. I had the thyroid out. Uh, there was something else that decided not to want to stay in my body that came out. Can't remember what it was because it was a crazy year. And then I had radiation after all the surgeries were over for about a month. And then about two months, things went well. And then I, I, I don't know if it was just genetics or just a really bad amount of stuff that happened, but um, I was diagnosed as um, immunodeficient, so now my body doesn't make antibody Bs, which protects you from um, bacteria. So now for the rest of my life, I, every two weeks I do an infusion, um, an IV infusion. So it takes about six hours. They come to my house. I usually do it on a Friday because it makes you feel kind of crappy for two days. And You do that every two months? Every two weeks. T two weeks? Every two weeks. Yep. So, you know, you adapt. Yeah. You adapt. You want to know why? Because I'm alive. So. Yeah. Ever, there's always something that could be much worse. So you've been through hell, but. Yeah. Still yeah, got but a smile I grew. on your face. I grew. You, you, yeah. I, tr I mean, let me tell you, our family, especially with the firework industry, we've had uh, more trials and tribulations. So I guess maybe you could say that I was prepped for that. Yeah. So fireworks is a dangerous business to be in. Gunpowder explosions. And we've had our tragedy. Really? We've had um, in, um, oh, my family's going to yell at me because I don't remember the exact date in the early 19, beginning of uh, the 1900s, we lost our factory. It went up. Undetermined. Common problem, I, I assume. You know, not so much, however... Because you have to spray spray water in a firework factory, don't you? Well... To keep it a damp environment. Way, way back when, that was the understanding. But now with technology, I mean, we've come eons beyond that. Oh, because okay. that was the first time. The second time in 1983, um, our, we, the entire facility imploded. And unfortunately, we lost my mom's brother, my uncle who was my godfather, and um, my second cousin, and my grandfather happened to be at the facility. Luckily, he was behind um, a, a huge trailer that acted like a, a wall to prevent him from the blast. So um, one of the neighbors across the street saw, obviously saw what was happening, ran in, jumped over the fence, grabbed my grandfather, and dragged him out. So luckily, he's, his life was preserved. Um, so it was, I was 83, so I was born in 74, I was nine years old, and I vividly could tell you everything that happened that day. Wow. So, it, it was, um, but you'll never forget something like that. Yeah. 
it's amazing actually as a, as a as, you know, as an industry i would imagine it's fraught with peril it yeah. really is and there's fly by nighters transporting it and transporting it making it importing it designing the it. things mm -hmm. all of it storing it making the now <clears throat> prior to 83 god we did everything. We imported in raw materials. My father used to mix chemicals to make colors. My uncles used to build the fireworks. I mean, it was from scratch to display. We do that Scratch to, to display, is that a t that's another term, right? Right. So a it, block it, scratch to display. Yeah, okay. literally you would get in chemicals, like if you remember chemistry class and, yeah. the, and, and, and the periodic table, we would get <laughs> That works. In. Yeah. <laughs> and um, my grandfather was a founder in the industry, he developed a lot of the, the earlier science and, and, and display magistry that you see hmm. now. Um, his oldest son, who passed on, um, also had a lot to do with just pushing the envelope to what you see today and how displays, firework displays are designed and, um, fun, you know, your finale, Yeah. which everybody knows the end of the firework show because all of a sudden it seems just like the 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 skies are on fire right lots of large sounding salutes we coined that finale in this is going to be another year i'm not going to remember <laughs> um because now justified i was a small child but we went to monaco and won the gold medal in a firework display and we we captured it because of our what we call our gucci grand finale see the one thing that pisses me off about fireworks is people who do it in their back garden. I will trust me, that's... It's like, well, that, actually no, that's another thing. Idiots. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, you know, when everyone goes, oh, great fireworks, gonna get outside. And then they send up a rocket and they send up that. And you're like, I'd much rather go to a million dollar display yes. and be overwhelmed yes. by it rather than just everyone have, I guess that's, you probably make more money off the, um, Domestic? We don't do that. Oh, you only we have do never commercial. Done that. We only display for whatever reasons, private, public, commercial, industry reasons. We do not sell to the public. Huh. Mm -mm. Nope, not, it's not something Leave that- Leave that to the Chinese. Yes, leave that to the other people. Now, of course, that's the most lucrative part of the industry, but yeah. you know, whatever. The market must be huge. <laughs> it is, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, the other interesting point about our industry is it's an, it's an international industry. But wherever you go, let's say you go to England, you go to Australia, you come to the United States, um, the people that make up the firework industry are predominantly Italian in ethnicity. Because there is a misconception that the Chinese invented fireworks. What they invented was the gunpowder. The, the, the charge, the explosives. It was the Italians that took all of those ingredients and made an actual firework for celebratory reasons. And most of those reasons, of course, way back when, were religious celebrations. That's the, see in England, we have Guy Fawkes. Yes, you do. And that's, that's our fireworks mm -hmm. night. In fact, that and New Year, that's it. When I, I so I did <clears throat> study abroad at um, U University of East Anglia, Norfolk. So okay, yep. Did a, a year there, and while I was there, there's, a, a, again, another very famous firework company in Great Britain, and because, kind of like our yachting industry, everybody knows everyone, you know, okay. it, it's small but international. And bitchy. <laughs> No, we're, I have to say this, in our, the firework industry is, is much more fun than, than our industry. Really? Although, they're kind of neck and neck at times, but <laughs> um, I think because it's so family-based, not only are the companies probably... Go back generations. Right. It's, yeah. it's a family business. They're all families, and, and family businesses are, are ran structurally and treated differently. They might all be corporations, but they're not treated like a blue chip corporation, yeah. you know? So um, I uh, contacted the family in England and they hosted me for a weekend and <clears throat> they are actually your firework company and family that does your Guy Fawkes Day. Good Lord. Yeah, pretty so cool. From, yeah, so from that, this Jaws got you into Marine. It did. How yeah. did that happen then? Yeah. So, 
pretty much everybody in my family went into fireworks, but my pa my mom's generation said for their children, you're not going straight into the company. You have to go get an education. Go and get a job. Do, you have to do something do first, not at fireworks by Gucci. Hmm. So I did, and at um, that, that's very good. I wish my dad had forced me to do that to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, there are a lot of rules and regulations, especially when you're living in a family that deals with explosives. So people are like, you bet you've played with firecrackers and you did all this stuff. It's like, no, we weren't even allowed to play with matches. So um, hmm. I went with my father and my brother at eight years old to go see this movie. And I was fascinated by it. And I was fascinated so by the marine biologist. So George was 76, 73, 76? Yeah, uh, 76. 76. Mm -hmm. So I went much later on, but I, I just was, my, my most favorite scene in the movie is when he's chum in the water. Right. And all of a sudden for the first time, and you're probably easily a good hour into the movie before you finally see Jaws, who's mm. by the way, name is Bruce. That's what they named him on the set. Oh, really? Because it was Steven Spielberg's lawyer's name Bruce <laughs> so that's why they named the shark Bruce cute little piece of trivia hang on so that's how you why uh, no no that's on. not why I became okay, okay. <laughs> so, while watching the movie the marine biologist fa fascinated me and I said I remember saying that's what I want to do and so I went to University of Miami I, I traveled throughout you know primary school graduated applied to University of Miami in for their marine biology department or program was accepted went through that afterwards was um, hired by the US Environmental Protection Agency as a marine biologist did that for two years and then um, had a wonderful mentor which I just need to put out there everybody should have multitudes of mentors in their life really just to keep you on track professionally personally and spiritually but so I had this great mentor and he said you know what you should do don't go on and get your PhD because I want to do shark biology. Don't go, don't go and do your PhD. Go to law school and do maritime law. Because one, he goes, I could probably count on one hand how many females there are in maritime law in the nation. And two, it's a great time right now for females to apply to law school. So unlike the rest of the world, I was like, hey, I like those odds, you know? <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of being a woman for yeah. once. And I, and I said, okay, you know, I'm not going to go crazy with this. I'll take the L stats once. I'll apply to a couple of schools, and if it's meant to be, it will happen. And I got accepted. And right after <sighs> law school, I was not a stellar student because I hated just that classroom environment. Well, yeah, going from a... You we're, know, we're, being out on a boat tagging sharks to yeah. and well and even in our family's <laughs> business, everything, it's just you're so open and free, so that whole structure of of course, probably being OCD doesn't help because sitting in a oh, you know, that classroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, conference call? About 30 minutes, right? That's all we need. Um, but um, so I was a good student, but I wasn't that top tier student. But I had really good contacts and a lot of diversification. So I just started throwing resumes out there. And I got hired by Holland and Knight. Um, by actually um, a well-known maritime attorney in our industry, Michael Moore, and I worked for him for five years. So that was my base. Hmm. And so now, 18 years later, I sit here because I went to go see Jaws. That's interesting. So your first one was working for the, for the EPA? Yes, yes. Yeah, I've got mm -hmm. some questions there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, unfortunately we could touch on <laughs> politics, which is not, is not a subject we're allowed to. No, and religion, right? Well, what do they say? No politics, no religion, no sex. No, I'm all right with the religion and the sex. <laughs> when it comes to politics in the last couple of years here? Oh, it's holy terrible. Holy moly. Because it's not like, hey, let's, you, what are you? I, I'm a Republican. Well, this is what's amazing. So you, do, you identify by party? Yes, we do. Okay. Well, at least my family does. Yeah. I mean, we were all Republicans. My uncle was a U.S. congressman. So we're very, and, and typically where I'm born and raised was always a very Republican New environment. New York? Long Island in Suffolk County. Uh, it was like a little bit, it was a quagmire. Okay. 
So. Yeah, no, the reason we don't touch on politics, I, I wouldn't say I'm a Republican, I wouldn't say I'm a Democrat, I wouldn't say I'm a Liberal. I w- yes. I, I, I will listen to all sides right. mm-hmm. and, and have an opinion of what feels right. Right. It just seems at this moment in time, it doesn't matter what that man does, this side of the argument will never right. even listen or pay any kind of just like no that was actually you'll never hear a democrat go that's a good actually point. that was good or he, vice I'm versa. glad he did that vice versa either i mean i'm well, not gonna i'm not gonna say one is right or wrong right now where we're at is just such black and white yeah and, and not only in politics but in many facets of life you know whether it's religion whether it's politics whether it's wealth whether it's immigration i mean you're either here or you're here. Yeah, but this is where his genius comes in. And he is a genius. <coughs> Who? The uh, le- leader in chief. Mm. I have to agree with you on that. The left will never vote for him. Nope. The right will vote for him. Mm-hmm. It's the middle ground. That's where you're going to win this game. And you want to know what? He speaks to the middle. Yeah. And that's why he's relevant. And that's why they're pissed off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and it blows my mind because people are like, oh, his tweeting and his grammar and the way he talks to people he's talking to the average voter which is not a college educated you know mba no. individual so and he, that's he why gets it. and that, oh, this is where we could go on for hours but that's, guess that's, we can. <laughs> that's my proportional representation of you know the college the college yes. uh, electoral system is genius yes. it pisses everybody off but it actually works right right anyway no politics. No politics, because nope, nope. that really could go... F- well, at I least could... we're on the same page. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For him, at least, right? Yes. For him. <laughs> um, uh, mentoring. Yes. Very important. Very important. And I've... N- I heard it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing a show with uh, Kristen Klein from Northrop and Johnson. Yes. And... Um, she was saying her mentor is... She's lighting, she's lighting the world on fire right now. She kind of alluded to that, and yeah. then I was just like, I, I really, no, she really pushed is. her too far. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, she, a female yacht broker. Yep. Killing it. A young female yacht broker. Yeah. So, you know, at least if you have... I notice in this industry, if you have age behind you, if you have some gray hairs behind you, no matter what you are, you just... There's more credence there. Listen, we're dealing with multimillionaires, billionaires. They like, the, they're, 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 it's their generation, you yeah. know, although more of um, Generation X and millennials are getting involved and becoming at that age where they're intermingling. But traditionally, the baby boomers, they want a gray haired lawyer in a suit, you know, or they want a maybe former Coast Guard, former Navy person selling yeah, them a, a boat, bit more. right? Yeah. What, what, why would they, wouldn't you think that I could actually captain this boat? And, and most people would say absolutely not. But when I'm out there doing it, it's funny, people are, other boats are getting out of the way. And I'm like, well, I'll take advantage of that. <laughs> you know Jenny Wicker? I love Jenny Wicker. She can drive a boat better than most people I know. Yes. Not most men, can. most people I know. <laughs> and she knows more about the intricacies of yeah. the vessel and the engines. She could probably fix most of it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. She actually sold me my boat. She's my yacht broker. See? Tiny little industry. It is. So, all right. Um, okay, so I, I, I would definitely say within my family, I had some great unofficial mentors and people are like oh that's your family no but I, I i really did i had my grandmother who was an italian woman that if you think about it your parents are your mentors well, it, to start it, with if you're smart i think they should be right or wrong you know? exactly yeah you could learn from them either way in fact it's probably better to see in fact it's good to have bad and good mentors yeah yeah and i definitely say i could identify both sides because and hopefully you're, you're smart enough to recognize which ones to follow and identify which ones are right and wrong. <laughs> some people can, some people can't. But mine would be my, my, grandfa- my grandmother was just brilliant. Um, she was the glue that held our family together, our extended family. Um, she and was then, born in America or was she? No, she was born home. in America. Mm-hmm. And um, my father was, was just 
a wealth of information for me to just develop into a good professional. He had hmm. all these puns. And of course, when you're younger, you hate hearing those puns. And one of his best puns, which to today, anyone that I mentor, I say to all the time is, um, contacts are king. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Now, it's not to be <laughs> like, oh, I know um, uh, George Clooney. <laughs> Okay, great. It's, I know this person. Oh, do you need this? I actually know them. Let me give them a call. Let me help you out yeah. there. You're like, you want that sort of job? You know what? I know this guy, and he's actually hiring for that. That's, that's the value in the contacts that he told Well, me. you are one of the most connected people in the industry, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> I don't think so, but I... I th you get around. Let's put it that way. I use my contacts for, I don't want to say the greater good, but for what it's worth is to help us all out. That's what a mentoring is about. Share the wealth. Is that why, are you still part of MISF? Or it was yes, that? so I'm on my last year as past chairperson of Marine Industries Association. Past chairperson. Mm -hmm. So I was a board member for a year, vice president for three years, president for two years, and now we've changed the title from president to chairperson, and now I'm on my second year of uh, past chairperson. And then at the end, uh, let's see, June uh, or July 1st of 19, I'll be officially off unless I decide to run for the board. But I, I think that boards really need- um, Change. Change, yeah. Yeah, you've been there a long time. I, I, I have to tell you, it was an amazing experience in education. And, and I got to meet a whole half of our industry that I never really have contact with because my side is <laughs> transactional, yep, buying and selling, yep. not the industry, you know, and, and it's funny because in our industry you always hear, well, what's more important, the people that build the boats or the people that sell the boats? But it's like, what comes first, chicken or the age? But they both are important and they both need each other. Mm. And historically, especially when I first came in, there was such a divide between those two segments of our industry and now I could honestly say I see them moving together for the greater good which is the preservation of our industry. So yeah that's all the lobbying were you involved with that? Um, it just, yes. Because we I interviewed mean, Phil and it just seems ridiculous that yeah. this is still not recognized as a as a thing. I know. This oh, it's just a bit of it, 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 this is this is pool furniture. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as a lawyer, it's also the, the transactions of these is treated like that, which blows my mind. How do you mean it's treated like that? Okay, so you're going to go buy, um, let's say you're going to go buy a $200,000 home, right? Right. You're going to hire an attorney. Yeah. Imagine how many of these are sold at two hundred thousand dollars, where an just attorney just a broker and somebody signs it and gets them. Done. Wow. And look at the liability. Let's say you have a captain, you have people on it, you're cruising all over maybe You can crash Bahamas. into things. You could kill people. You know, you could really do damage. The other thing, I mean, obviously, historically now, after 18 years, I'm dealing with larger boats, but I try and talk to my clients that are buying and, and, and explain to them, why do you need a lawyer? Not because I need billables, but because there's a whole hierarchy that's going to change with your purchase. So how is this, this is, you know, a multi-million, no, not this one, but you know, the, the typical yachts are a multi-million dollar asset. This is, this is, this is the, this is the, the heartbeat of America, well it was. It is, it's, it's really the, the most heartbeat. common boating. Yeah. So, and I love it. I started with a 19. Sea got problems at the moment, haven't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but listen, it's a, it, it's a publicly traded company and every publicly traded company goes through ebb and growth. True. And so. I think the 38 Sundancer is their... Sweetheart. Yeah, it's the model which... I love this boat. This... Now, yeah. historically purchased it for kind of more of that couples cruising. Oh, let's go to the Bahamas. You know, it's a floating apartment is what it is. Um, I'm going to get ready and, and change it to more of that social am animal boating like I call it where you go from front to bow, cabin underneath, but there's more connectivity. Whereas oh, okay. this is more divided. It's like the people partying in the front, people partying in the back, and then those that are stuck having to make sure that 
yeah. the boat doesn't run aground. <laughs> that would be my job. <laughs> we'll come back to the boat in a minute because uh -huh. SeaWare has a very dear place in my heart. Um, we were talking mentoring. Mentoring. MSIF. M mm -hmm. M -M -I -A what, what was Phil? I mean, so firstly, I was very blessed to be um, the president. So I started to be the president of our board when he was brought on to be our director. Now his title has changed, changed to president CEO. So that's why we changed everything around. Well, it's, these organizations, so uh, as, as far as I can see from an organizational point of view, and I've never <laughs> been in one, never volunteered. For, it is volunteer? Yes. For what I do is volunteer, Freaking the board. Hell. I mean, Sit. Phil is employed, obviously, because he does, that's his job day yeah. to day. For me, your board really, I mean, it's philanthropy, it's a non-for-profit, so the board positions historically for those sorts of, of associations are voluntary. So, it's amazing I, you gave that much of your life <laughs> to that. But I gained, okay, so you weren't paid, but yeah, I, I find that payment doesn't only come in dollars. You know, I, I really, I mean, I met people who I would have never met. I have the ability to call icons of our industry where I never would have been able to do that otherwise. Um, and I gave back hmm. because I'm helping people buy toys. I'm not out there curing cancer, yes. so I feel like I gave back. I think with, um, Phil said it was the um, same thing. He said he can pick up his phone and he can call anybody in the industry, but he can also call people with the brightest minds in the world. Yeah. Because he's got their yes. numbers in his phone and it's like... Now, he obviously, as you recall, before being our president CEO of Marine Industries, was um, the vice president of Westport. Mm. And so, great boats, large boats, loved boats. So yes, I mean, he's got a Rolodex filled with the 1% of the 1%. And um, that's, that's valueless. Yeah. Especially if you could actually get them on the phone, in which he can, and so he's the perfect person in this role to bring our industry to the present daylight. So what is the challenge with, is it getting that recognition or is it getting the tax relief, is it getting the... Well, so here's the problem, is that we never ever can forget that we all exist here because there's people buying toys. That's their mentality, right? This is for fun. The minute that you make it not fun for them by making it work or more business oriented, you lose them. So we've got this delicate, the, the actual buyers, the owners of whether it's a center console or it's a you okay. know, 200 foot Lursen. It's, they're all the same people. They are all of our clients. You know, they're all of our customers. But again, they're buying these assets for fun. So the moment you start bringing legislation and rules and right. regulations, it's not fun anymore. This, yeah, I mean, same con same conversation with what they're doing over in Europe with all of the charter regulations and not only each of the different EU countries, but within each of the territories within a country within the EU. It's a minefield, and so you're pushing people, boat owners, out, out because it's not fun anymore. It's expensive and it's. It's time consuming and it causes change. You've actually explained to me in simple terms what that <laughs> does. Geez, that makes so much sense. I like to yeah. uh, take the Donald Trump of way of explaining things to people. Yeah, just so, I we mean, do it's, this it is. It's in order what to. It is. Yeah. Good Lord. So you had six years, seven years? With them? With yeah. Marine Industries? Uh, five, six, seven, eight. When I'm done, it will be a total of eight in various positions. And eight years. I loved it. Yeah. Do you feel that's also helped your business as well? Um, yes and no. You know, so no when I was taking time away from my business to do that, mm. but then yes because of my own professional growth and, and the people that I know now. And also the respect that I think it gave me as an individual yeah. in our industry. So. It was a double-edged sword. But mm. one, I would never, you know, people are like, oh, would I do that again? I, I thought it was great. And now I'm looking for, as this ends, I, I only like to be on one board so I could give 
one hundred percent of my yeah. attention. Well, no, no now you've got your, now you've got your money making years. Yeah, I know. As Sorry. as Andrew S- reminds the me shit. quite often, <laughs> he's like, um, "I've got a board for you to be on. It's called Luxury Law Group and Luxury Financial Group." <laughs> so let's talk about the business then, because okay. it's for me. Um, I, I haven't done that much legal work, but most law firms are very stuffy. They're in high rises. Your law firm is so approachable. Approachable, yeah. Yep. So, and they're, okay, so everything has pluses and minuses, right? So yep. people will say, oh, Danielle and Andrew, they were in various firms. You know, they went from here to here to here to here. Yeah, we did. And Every that's lawyer not, does that, doesn't it? Not really. Well, I think it depends on the generation you talk about, but the generation that taught us frowns upon that because you know they're going for the gold watch. Yeah, they're going for the partnership. You have yes. to be, what, there eight years or something before yes. you can become eight, a partner? Eight to ten, yeah, eight to ten. And that's and how they keep you in. Mm-hmm. They make they pay you nothing for the first couple of years. Correct. So, what? Yeah, so okay. Again, taking that old adage from my dad is that contacts was king. I didn't worry about the money and the partnership. I worried about building a book of business because that's where the value lies as an attorney. Mm. Just like as a broker, your, your contacts are king. You know, it's, it's, we're all selling something. I just, my widget is my brain, you know? So, but I'm still a salesperson in, in, in the very elementary aspect of what it is that I do. <laughs> So I just do it in a Jaws t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny too, because one time one of my partners said to me, because I, I tend not to do the black or navy suit. And um, they said to me, you know, Danielle, I got to tell you that even the Rolling Stones wanted their lawyers in a, black st- in a black suit. And I said to them, okay, I mean, I had to just take it in and, 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 and accept it. But as Andrew and I came together and, and we built what we built, we're a, a yachting chic environment. You know what I mean? We're not a black mm. or navy um, law well, firm. He's always impeccably dressed. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> That's why I said, I'm not gonna compete with Andrew High. In fact, if you didn't know he was married, you'd think he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you seen his wife, Stephanie? Gorgeous. The two of them. She dresses him? No, 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 no. She she is just gorgeous. Uh, yes. And their children are beautiful little blonde-haired, blue-eyed boys. So I joke with them I'm all the time. I'm responsible for their second child, by the way. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Hmm, okay. Listen. We took them out and got them drunk. <laughs> <laughs> One time, I always say to them, you know, I always wondered who that family was when you go and buy a frame, right? Now I know it's your family. <laughs> it clears it all it's up. them, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're the family behind them. <laughs> when I, I mean, Jesus, when I first met him and he was um, uh, in law school as a law clerk, I was about five years out and um, we were at Hellbets at the time. That's where we first met. Still then, it was just unbelievable. Right off of the pages of GQ. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's All his right. thing. So now let's talk about personal life. Now, this is your parents' home that we're at. Yes. This is Party Central, isn't it? I've been to yeah. a few parties here. <laughs> you want to know what's really funny? Is I'll be out and about and somebody will come up to me and be like, Oh, Danielle, it's great to see you again. And I, I'm, I have that kind of, <laughs> who are you look on, your, uh, on my face? And they're like, I was at your New Year's Eve party or I was at your birthday party. And I was like, yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Fun, right? <laughs> so this, I mean, it is a very, what do you do at your parents and not yours? Well, the boat is here. So, you know, we had this whole, oh, the parties? Yeah. Because it's just, so my home, so I live two blocks over in Idlewild. My home is more of a long rectangle, whereas this is spread out. Mom, your house is so much better for this. And <laughs> you can let's not talk about the fact that everything starts here and ends here, and then I just get to go home in my nice clean house. Do not put that 
no, video. No, no, we'll take, we'll, then there'll be no parties here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm at the point in, in, I guess, my circle of life that my parents are aging, and so we're looking to, I'm definitely going to help them in their later years, so we're going to sell mine and theirs and look for... Something together? Yeah. Holy, really? Yeah. You're that close? Um, no, I mean, they're self-sufficient, but um, unfortunately, my father um, had was diagnosed with, er, not early onset, but fast, I'm going to say fast acting, glaucoma, and lost pretty much 80% of his total vision in about six months. Oh, and he's 77, God so almighty. Uh, my parents are 10 years apart, and so it's put a huge strain yeah. on them. And he's a proud German, so do you think he's accepting this well? No. You know, he's like, I'm going to drive. I'm like, yeah, no, you're not driving. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the look, I credit, I credit a lot of what I've become and who I am for them and their foundation and what they gave me. And um, it's very much the Italian culture and every culture, I think, except for America. America. Well, the English as well. We don't do it. You don't do it. Okay. No. So more of that we Mediterranean. Want as much, we want at least two hours distance between <laughs> yeah. our, our parents and us. Now, my parents, mind you, you talk to anyone that knows me, they know my parents intimately well because they come everywhere with me. And um, I used to live on Miami Beach. Now, my mom's mom, my, who, one of them that I said was a mentor, um, I'll never forget it. She went on a yacht closing with me to the Bahamas. Um, and then one time I had to meet a client at, you'll know this place being from Miami Beach, Bed, right? The old nightclub, Bed. I never went, but yes. Bed. So when I was living on Miami Beach, it was, it's heyday. And so, um, I don't know, I just, because family is such a huge part of my life. I said to the client, hey, you know, do you mind if I cream bring my grandmother? And he's like, sure. To bed? Yeah, to bed. And wow. <laughs> so my, it was he and his wife and a couple of their friends and myself, and I brought my grandmother. And let me tell you, I might be fun, but she broke the mold. Wow. And now remember that generation, that, that yeah. pre-war generation? I mean, they're making booze in their basement. So I tell you that's what. That's life. I mean, I, I, I don't want it any other way. I, I was at the gym um, on Tuesday doing a class and spoke to the instructor afterwards and he was talking about um, how the human body needs struggle. It needs you to go to your breaking point because the body needs to know where, it's where you need its levels yeah. to be. And it sounds like you and your family have had a number of challenges, Yep. but you are who you are. Because of it. Yeah. I mean, it may, me, I might be a compl I might not even be sitting here if everything was perfect. In, in I my guarantee youth. you wouldn't be. Yeah. No, no I probably. You'd no. be like, what? On a yeti in yeah. the sun? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're the cabana boys, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. No, I just, I, I feel, I, I, I'm a very faithful person, and that definitely has grown in the last five years. But, um, I feel very blessed. Trials, tribulations positives, negatives, I think that you've got to take them all and, and work them into your life in a growth manner. Yeah. So. Well, very good. Well, thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I really enjoyed this. And we are now almost at the midday. Hi, time. God. <laughs> <laughs>